and welcome to Stellar Entrepreneur Show at WomenLines.com. Yes, friends, it's time to talk to some entrepreneur who has achieved something from which you can learn a lot. You can get inspiration and you can have your dreams come true by following her path. Yes, we are having Nida Seher. Friends, 5G connectivity is heralded as a game changer for mobile and wireless communications. The development of the technology opens up the possibilities for new business models and innovation for key areas, such as Singapore's marine time industry and the push for Industry 4.0. So Nida Seher aims to be at the forefront of this change as the founder of Knife, one of Singapore's leading edge computing startups. Yes, friends, today we are having an entrepreneur who has taken a step in the field of leading edge computing startup. Knife Labs is a multi-cloud edge figuring stage that arranges responsibilities from the cloud to organize to the edge. It totals telcos, server farms, and high hyperscalers to give a stage that can move jobs on request. Let's hear more from Nida and understand what her startup is all about. Welcome, Nida, to our show. Thanks, Charu. Thanks for having me here. Such a pleasure to have you, Nida. So, yes, please share about your startup and about yourself as a person. So, yes, uh, let me start with my startup first. Um, I work on a company called Knife, N-I-F-E, which is actually an amalgamation of two, com uh, two metals, nickel mm -hmm. and ferrous. Mm -hmm. So nickel and ferrous together form the core of the earth and a lot of uh, oh. planetary and meteorological um, um, uh, meteoroids and other things like that. So yes. we want to be core of every single application. That's what our aim is. And how do we do that? By helping customers know which is the right infrastructure for them to deploy. Like you rightly said, hyperscalers, 5G environment, cloud environment. We can help customers do that uh, simply. And that has been our aim. A lot of people think that NI in knife actually stands for my name because NI also yes. is Nida. Yes. yes. But, yeah, but actually, that's not true. Uh, maybe to some extent, I would have to say. But yeah, so coming to me, um, mm -hmm. I started this company about two and a half uh, years ago. Okay. And prior okay. to that, I worked in a hardcore uh, enterprise infrastructure space, uh, did my corporate career, did a whole bunch of entrepreneurial courses. I've always wanted to be um, an entrepreneur and uh, quit my job in 2017 and moved on to the next goal in my life, which was to build a startup. This is my second startup. So uh, my first startup didn't do that well. Yeah, but I had a lot of learning from there. Fantastic. And how is Nida as a person? We'd love to know more about you. Nida as a person is extremely stubborn, uh, extremely perseverant. Uh, will not give up. Resilience wow. is what people uh, uh, say a lot about me. Um, but um, more more often or not, I think I'm a very sensitive person. Um, have the same uh, things that everyone else goes through. I think in our age group, especially anxiety and you know all those things are very prevalent. But yeah, I love cats. I love swimming. Uh, I love poetry. Those are the other things that I do apart from um, building this startup and being as stubborn and resilient as possible. Yeah, Fantastic. I, I'm sure that resilience in you has helped you to climb this journey and you are here and talking about your second startup. So what are the three most important habits to be a successful entrepreneur? You have been through an entrepreneurial journey and you must have seen so much. So can you share some insights about it? Yeah, so I think um um there's a um i would say a speaker a mentor of sorts that um i know of called vedishwaran who's also a father of indian uh, e-commerce okay. he actually wrote a blog saying there are seven things that every startup founder should have uh, should be willing to give up or should be willing to do things and the characteristics were nothing related to your uh, your uh, what do i say your uh, skill set as a profession or you know your the things that you pick up he said all you need is blood sweat years a whole bunch of hard work passion desire to uh you know continuously work and to to be there out and out and you know wow. conquer whatever you need. Super. so i think <laughs> i think the three things that you need is really um grit i would say it's really mm -hmm. important because 
there's so much learning and unlearning that you have to do in a, in a startup world that you know no matter how technically strong you are or what kind of degrees you have there's so much learning and unlearning right grit is very I important agree. and and passion yeah because day in That's and day out yeah, definitely yeah. yeah you're working with employees you're working with customers you're trying to uh, please investors so i think the passion towards what you're building if you don't like it you're not going to succeed cannot grow definitely yeah and i think the third thing is um, you know a, a whole bunch of um, um a more than passion and grit i would say wanting to make a mark right prove yeah. prove something world i think that is what because you'll go out and out and do things if you have these elements true, that's what true. i would say are the most important characteristics <laughs> of course uh, yeah. time management productivity yeah, and all let's that. go zan limit definitely we have a big list definitely but definitely you have shared the most important one which every entrepreneur i mean aspires to definitely have in the list so as an entrepreneur what are the biggest challenges i mean you have it's not an easy i always say entrepreneurship is like walking in a park but it's the park is the jurassic park because you never know from where you get one dinosaur and then you have to cross him and the second dinosaur comes and then you have to cross that so yeah what has been your journey and want to share something yeah i will tell you two things um i mean way back when i graduated from college it was like 2008 or something and startups had the the word startup had started picking up right all right and even in college we were trying to say oh how do we build a startup kind of a thing even that early um on and we always associated startups with glamour Very right true. we said you become a startup founder you have your glamorous because then you're doing so much work you have so much money you're going to buy a, a lot of property and then you'll have cars and all that stuff it's not <laughs> like it's that not, <laughs> absolutely not absolutely like that not. it's just it's day in and day out of work right. work 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 right um but I, i'll also tell you one thing that um i was in corporate for about 10 years and oh. um I actually won about thirty-five awards in a span of ten uh, years that I worked in corporate. Fantastic. And the thing was, the thing was, I was a workaholic. Yeah, I used to go to office at seven. I used to relish work, come out of office at nine o'clock, and you know. But then I was never happy. Like I, I would go back to my managers and I would say, like you know, something more challenging, something more challenging. Okay. And they would give me more work. It, it was not like you know, I'm just. Uh, a super workaholic and my managers are just saying nida just go chill for a weekend or whatever stuff they would tell me that as well but they would give me more work and then i would get bored every 6 months right every 6 months i would go back and ask for something more challenging okay so <laughs> this is the first time in my life that i felt that challenges don't end you you get up tomorrow morning there'll be a new challenge it'll be something about some uh, employee or be something about some customer it'll be something about a new strategy that we implementing so there's so much learning and uh, it's a lifetime of learning really so i quite enjoy that but then it's really not a walk in the park you have uh, t-rex you have all kind of dinosaurs is popping up from here and there alligators crocodiles reptiles you see everything over here and more importantly you will also see a lot of sharks who just want to yes. uh, <laughs> just want to make use of you uh, as a startup kind of founder but uh, yeah um, it, it's a it's a very pleasurable journey uh, would not <laughs> would not have done it any differently than any challenge you want to highlight something you remember that that was extreme challenge and you crossed it and you were happy about it oh my god so um, i was um, so i moved from india to singapore mm. way back in 2020 during pandemic right it was okay. i think the first cluster that came out in singapore was probably around jan 21st i don't remember right. the dates yeah i landed up in singapore on 11th jan right that's so and i was raising, <laughs> yeah i was raising funds right so um i moved to singapore and whatever happened um 21st march they said um the flights are going to stop and then whatever whatever yeah. and then my investors would come back with results on 27th march okay? okay so i called up home on 21st and then i said papa listen there is a slight chance that i might get stuck over here but i'm going to take the risk Okay. Okay. I'm okay. going to take the risk 
because twenty first maybe it will close, maybe it will not. And I think a day or a day after that, all the flights were completely shut down. So here I'm in Singapore, twenty seventh. I haven't made my investment. Okay, but I have no money because I'm not on a job, and I've moved to Singapore with limited resources. Definitely. So fantastic. fantastic i have lease for another month i'm like fine uh, april will get over and then you know i'll finally come out of it um april goes may comes we've moved apartments now because the lease got over in one apartment i've moved somewhere else and i'm like investment has not come in as yet my investors are telling me that you know it will come by may end so oh, may becomes the next time june <laughs> yes may becomes june becomes july becomes August. Oh dear. And oh my God. So. Ah. Oh. And uh, yeah, and I'm I'm living off my savings from uh, my goodness. past life, right? So here I am trying to see how I can live a proper life, say spend less amount of money, build my startup while I'm doing that, That's and then at the really same time. <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> Oh God, I I don't know. When I recall the time, it just seems so funny. But um, but it was really aggravating. It was like tension every single day because you know every month of time. Because around the first around first year, doing a lot of things. So anyway, in May on May twenty second, I think I told my uh, investor that I'm going to raise, uh, whether or not I raise the funds, I'm going to register a company because I need to hire interns and I need to start working on the product. So there, in in my uh, condo, whichever condo that I was living in, Pongal, I just okay. went ahead. I registered my company. All my interns are remote, and you know we're working day in and day out. Finally, we made it through investment in September, but then the investment came in in January. So this is how it was. Must be a I, journey. I, Must be a yeah, journey. Yeah, hats off. No, I don't know for your what... patience and your determination that. You continue, and you never, as you said, you are stubborn. So yeah, that stubborn part yeah, yeah, yeah. helped you. There were times when people sat me down, like my friends in Singapore. They sat me down, and they said, "What are you doing? It? What are you doing? Right? You know, you you can just get on the next flight, go back home whenever the uh, they are ready. They call are you. Yeah, I just go back. You know, there's no point waiting for it. And then I had other people who were telling me. Okay, why don't you pick up a job here, right? You know, why do you have to wait for an investment, right? Uh, because what we are working in is on a deep tech space. It's not something that I'll make a product in a month's time and no. it'll be out and out and people. Technology can, so takes time, going to definitely. Be. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, uh, that that is something Good that I would say. definitely and inspiring. That yeah, the patience helps, and at times we have to trust our intuition, which people say women are blessed with some intuition. and i'm sure that intuition must be helping you to survive the time and you are here with us now fantastic and uh, we want to know more about your work your company so what makes your startup stand out from all other startups in your niche you want to highlight so of course uh, you know my cxo team has more than uh, all of us put together have more than 100 years experience so i got my technical architect uh, who who has about 30 years experience one of my previous companies from uh, emc squared he's there uh, one of the first employees of yahoo uh, does our operations work so she's team there. is strong uh, team is strong super strong right and then we've done this day in and day out when we were working in uh, in the enterprise space we've done this for large scale customers like bloomberg like new york stock exchange and so on and so forth just so want we to know that... just want to interrupt a little uh, you want to explain in a lingo for a common man what is knife exactly doing can you share simple language okay. knife is cutting latency like cutting all the uh, issues that you have when you take about talk about deployments so forget about what is deployment what is application just let's just forget about all that right think you're booking like an airbnb um in some place in france Okay. okay. You want countryside. You want you have a budget, and then you have um you know a certain number of people that are going with you, and then you have certain dates in mind. Okay. Right? So what you do? You go onto an Airbnb website. You put in all the filters, and then you say this is the place that I want to go and book. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. We do that for applications. We just do that for applications. So application needs to be somewhere. It needs to Very be true. in Singapore. in a specific area 
and there are certain reasons uh, there has to be a faster performance there has to be lower cost or maybe higher cost uh, the customer doesn't care you know there are any number of factors in which you want to put push the application in a certain location so that's what we do we that's are it. airbnb for applications applications that's a beautiful description i will always remember <laughs> So, so yeah, that you continue. Yeah. Yeah, and the that team is strong. Yeah. Yeah. You shared about the team. The, the team, team part is very strong, and you were saying very experienced the people are there. Is, the team is super experienced, but I think the biggest thing that I I think I would say our company has is the value system, right? So we are very very customer first. Like you know, whatever time the customer calls, we want to solve the customer's issue. So I have my CTO who says that listen, let's get involved with the customer first. Yeah. Let's solve his problem. Right, rather yeah. than us wanting to make a sell just because I can make a sell, let's give a value addition to the customer. So yeah. I think that's what I would say. The third thing is, uh, sixty percent of our team is uh, women. Okay, wow. and um, yeah. I, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's not something that I, w- I would want to like brag about. But what we did strategically is that um, we picked out women who were restarting their careers. okay some of them okay and that that worked very well for us because here are these women who are working with us who have a point to prove okay because they they have struggled to get a job in the mainstream Again, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so um and they, they are talented they're super talented they are amazing amazing women experience right yeah experience so i think there is a lot of drive that the team overall has and that drive typically comes because almost all our team is you know superly passionate about uh, passionate about whatever we're building and they all want to prove a point so yeah so i think Amazing. that's that's what i would say very good the cx team very, low yeah. team and the values fantastic So now being in the tech field and this latest technology field, I'm sure time must be some factor which you have to manage, right? And you must have picked some skills to boost your productivity for work. We want to share some one tip which can help other women entrepreneurs. Yeah, so I always say that there is a concept that says work-life balance, right? So I personally think it's work-life integration. so you have work you have life and then you have integrated work life right so this means that when i'm in 9 to 5 doesn't mean that i can't go to a dentist right it it means that i can take time off my work and go to the dentist and come back and then continue working um depending till the time i want to work so i think my biggest takeaway here is that instead of thinking about um a uh, restricted amount of work and then life think of it as an integration the second thing that i do is i've realized there are certain activities that drain you and then there are certain activities that energize you for example i'll give you um swimming actually helps me energize okay so no matter what i do if i go swimming in the morning i'm i'm energetic even midday i can really come back day. it's not sleepy yeah i'm i'm actually very energetic so i bundle my work along with things that make me energized Fantastic. so swimming is one activity sometimes i've seen like if i'm very confused you know picking up needles and doing some crochet work actually helps me out or um, middle of, yeah middle of the day you know i'm very fond of poetry so you know i'm whatever then i pick up poetry and i read it and then so the reason why i'm able to do this is because i don't differentiate work from my life nice. and everything is integrated beautiful so there are yeah i i think that that's my take away from it figure out what is more energizing for you bundle that, those activities like a lot of people find cooking actually very energizing yeah. so that that's something that you know people have to do yeah it's a fantastic piece of advice because i will highlight especially other women entrepreneurs who are going to listen to this talk that once we start prioritizing our self care because this way we are giving time to ourselves our requirements because now we are thinking what is energizing us you are getting back to your original energy everybody should be having the clarity about themselves what they enjoy and they can integrate as you mentioned it has to be integrated together that can be wonderful for them they can perform better i'm hopeful yes so any significant aha moment you want to share with us before we end our conversation aha moment yes i think the biggest aha for me has been as an entrepreneur the biggest aha for me uh, has been that my company is a reflection of who i am so it, it's 
how do I say this? Technically, you have those aha moments when you've uh, made some changes to your platform or, you know, you made a customer entry or whatever. But my biggest thing that I've realized is that the, the value, my values, I carry forward to my team and my company. So the more and more better I am, the yeah. better the company becomes. And I don't do it. Like I don't talk to each and every employee that I have in my company, but I've realized how it cascades down. Right. And I've right. also realized most of my work is people management okay. and the rest of it is um, Excel. So I think that that has been my aha. The fact that people are important and the fact that values uh, help out quite help a lot. Out. Yeah. Fantastic. So last question, uh, please share some message for Women Lines audience. Yeah, I mean, only thing that I have to say, I mean, I, I say this all the time for women, right? A lot of metrics and a lot of data says women are very low risk takers, right? Um, the reason why they uh, they tend to be, you know, in their own uh, cocoon is because they don't want to take risk or they're afraid. So my only advice is just don't be afraid. Just don't limit yourself with any belief that says that I cannot do something. Right. You can wear braces at 40 on a personal level, yes. uh, but you can also climb a mountain. You can always do things that you think you can't do. OK, you just need to streamline and focus a little bit more on that. But it's really important to take risks. And I'm really not saying that climb a mountain, but I'm saying take those smaller risks so that you, you can, can go along. Beautiful advice you have shared, Neda. You yourself are example because in the field which you're working, there are very few women and you have taken that risk. You have taken that leap and now you're running your own startup. So this is going to inspire many other women who are having that dream and we should give them that boost that they can take the next step. It's all about taking that action and first leap towards your journey. Thank you so much for sharing so wonderful insights. We wish you all the best for your startup and take care. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.